Uh, I am a millennial. <laughs> Sorry. Just want to apologize ahead of time. And, uh, you know, we believe, millennials believe we invented brunch. Uh, we, no, we did not, although we do keep brunch in business. And I have to admit, I really love brunch. And uh, I, love, uh, I love fresh fruit. I even love, and, and I know this is whatever, but I, I just love fresh flowers. Amen. Eating breakfast. Okay, and uh, I love I love eggs, and I love all the different meats. Like if you go to brunch, and and of course you're overpaying, it's ridiculous, uh, and um, and you're you are three mimosas and not me, you are, and uh, and 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 you're like you're oh wow, you're like just flowers and eggs and meats and sushi sometimes, just different things at brunch. It's great. I I love brunch, and and, and the other. Uh, day I was, I had a meeting in New York City. And so I was catching the train at a, at a station. I had never caught it before. And I was going to go have a nice breakfast. So I'm thrilled. I'm up early and I'm thrilled for this brunch experience. Well, of course, I'm standing on the wrong side of the tracks. And I'm like feeling real good about myself until my train pulls up. And I'm like, oh my God, that's it. And so I've got to run around and then go under. And I mean, I'm holding coffee, of course. I have a backpack on and I am running full speed. I'm probably wearing white shoes, destroying them. Okay, and I, I get to the other side and it was, and I've, it was like a movie. They're staring at me and I'm like, wait, 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 wait. And they're staring at me and they just take off. Like the, like the conductor, they're, they're looking at me, stone face. And I'm so angry, I, like, because I've spilled my coffee now on my shoes, my shirt. I, I, I've, stuff's fallen out of my backpack. And I, I mean, I was so mad. I threw my coffee and just screamed because I missed the meal. <sighs> I told you I wanted to apologize ahead of time for being a millennial. <laughs> And, uh, you know, I was thinking about that today. And I think some people, sadly, spiritually, are going to miss out on a meal, on the greatest meal, on the greatest family reunion of all time. I want to actually read a passage out of Revelation chapter 19. I'm going to go five through nine, and then we'll jump to 16 and 17. It's very interesting. Let's look at it. The Bible says, and from the throne came a voice that said, praise our God, all his servants, all who fear him, from the least to the greatest. Then I heard again what sounded like the shout of a vast crowd or the roar of mighty ocean waves or the crash of loud thunder. Praise the Lord. For the Lord, our God, the Almighty reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice and let us give honor to him for the time has come for the wedding feast of the lamb and his bride has prepared herself. She has been given the finest of pure white linen to wear for the fine linen represents the good deeds of God's holy people. And the angel said to me, write this. Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding feast of the Lamb. And he added, these are true words that come from God. On his robe at his thigh was written this title, King of Kings and Lord of all Lords. Doesn't that do something for you? Then I saw an angel standing in the sun shouting to the vultures flying high in the sky. Ready? Come, gather together for the great banquet God has prepared. This passage, really, it represents the end of the world we know. And it, it represents a new world. It represents all of the journey and the struggles and the challenges of this life, in a sense, ending in us as believers beholding the victory. And when all is said and done, we will sit with our Lord as his bride, as the body of Christ at a great 
meal, celebrating our victory that it was worth it. That's good news. But as I mentioned before, unfortunately, some folks will choose to miss the meal. I think the reason is, and I've heard it said for believers, that your best life will be your next life. And that doesn't mean, hey, expedite your life and quit or commit suicide or anything crazy. It just means that as good as life can be or will be, or even as bad as it will be, there is another life in eternity with Jesus, and it will be greater. But I don't want anyone to miss this. And people miss it because they choose to live their best life now versus living their best life later. So today, I want to preach a message titled, Don't Miss the Meal. Don't miss the meal. Look at somebody next to you and tell them, I'm saving you a seat. I'm saving you a seat. Don't miss the meal. I want to I wanna highlight four types of people that will miss the meal today. You may identify yourself within this group. Don't be afraid. There's good news for you. The Bible says in Matthew 22, one through six, Jesus also told them other parables. He said, the kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of a king who prepared a great wedding feast for his son. Let's stop there for a second. Okay, just like in Revelation, the bride sits. Okay, God, he prepares this great feast for his son. We are Christ's reward. Representative of the groom, us the bride, here you see the same thing. When the banquet was ready, he sent his servants to notify those who were invited, but they all refused to come. So he sent other servants to tell them the feast has been prepared. The bulls and fattened cattle have been killed and everything is ready. Come to the banquet. Come to the banquet. Now let's read the first part of verse five. But the guests he had invited ignored them and went their own way. Here's the first kind of person that's gonna miss the meal. Number one, those who choose to go their own way. You know, what Jesus said is he said that wide and broad is the road that leads to destruction. Many enter through it, but narrow is the way that leads to life. I don't want to make Christianity... I don't want to get up here every week and make following Jesus something it isn't. I don't like that. I, I, I always want to, personally, I always like to, in life, kind of under-promise and over-deliver, you know? It's a great strategy for marriage. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. But, you know, like, like if you're kind of trying to sell something or if you're presenting something at work, like, like you, everybody knows those people who overpromise but underdeliver. You know, it's like, it's like I don't want to be up here and be like, man, when you follow Jesus, everything automatically turns around. You get wealthy, you get healthy, you get stealthy. I don't know. I couldn't think of a <laughs> T-H or T-H-L-Y. Okay. You know, because that, that's not true. Yeah. Jesus is like, in this life, you'll have trouble, yeah. right? And in this life, you're gonna have some stuff. Take heart though. There's a next life that will be your best life. And also in the middle of your struggle, you can have great comfort, great peace and great victory. But the thing is, is following Jesus in a lot of ways, it is self-denial. It is taking up your cross and following him. It's his way because he is the way. And so many people ask Jesus to follow them. And Jesus is like, the last time I checked, I created you. 
The last time I checked, I knit you together. The last time I checked, I know every hair on your head. Like the last time I checked, I brought the sun up. I brought it down. I set the stars in order. The last time I checked, I sit on the throne. The last time I checked, I'm in control. But you want me to follow you? <laughs> like, what? But like, this is what so many people do. We go our own way because we want our own way. It's the garden all over again. I see the apple. I want to eat it. I want to share it. And it's like, why not, God? Why not? And Jesus is like, that's not how it is. If you want to sit at this meal, you got to do it my way. You got to do it my way. I want to compare our way versus God's way. My way often is selfishness. God's way is selflessness. My way is self-preservation. Take care of me. God's way is generosity. It's, it's lose your life to find it. My way is to hook up with whomever, whenever. God's way is covenant and intimacy with one. My way is my own understanding. God's way is faith. You won't understand. My way is please myself. God's way, please the Lord. Serve others. My way is ghosts and dismiss the people who fail me and bother me. God's way is forgive and even turn the other cheek. My way is live for now. God's way is live for eternity. You will miss the meal if you choose to go your own way. Second part of verse five, one person goes to his farm, to his farm. Now, I know that a farm uh, vernacular isn't something we're used to in the city, uh, but this is where we get food from. <laughs> this is where they breed dogs that you might have one of these people, so they're important. But I wanna, I wanna highlight the second person. It's, it's those who prioritize survival. Prioritize survival. Because the farm, it represented four things. It represented work. It represented food. It represented home. It represented needs. Equal that all out. And it represents survival. Now, I don't think it's bad to survive. I, I think you need to survive. You need to eat, maybe a little less brunch. Right? You got to work. In fact, you're supposed to. It's really like if you can, you should. It's biblical, right? You got to have somewhere to lay your head, I think. I mean, Jesus did say foxes have nests, right? Or foxes have dens, birds have nests. <laughs> See, I don't even know the animals. <laughs> but the son of man has no place to lay his head. Meaning he was, he was traveling, he's moving. He's like, that wasn't his concern. And I think that whole point there in, in, in Luke 9 is the point. Where it's like a lot of us, our priority in life is to make it through life. And, you know, following Jesus is like this. It's like this tension that never goes away. It's a good tension though. It, 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 a lot of times it's not problems to be solved as much as it's tensions to be managed. Where it's like, I, I know I, I gotta have these things, but like I also gotta have Jesus more. And like if what Jesus asks me to do, if what Jesus calls me to do, if what Jesus invites me to do actually contradicts or overrides my survival, I got to choose Jesus over survival, over comfort, over the mundane, over the stuff that makes me feel like I'm going to be okay. Because the reality is, is those who make it to the meal find their comfort, find their value, find their peace, find their provision, find their abundance, find all they need in Jesus. Jesus says, seek me first. Everything else will follow. 
but we seek us first and we fit God in. They went to their farm. And what's so crazy about that is, well, the food was right in front of them. Jesus says, I'm the bread of life. You know, my kids, well, they drive me insane. I love them. I do. I have so much. In fact, being a parent is kind of like this. You are perpetually exhausted of little kids, perpetually exhausted, tired of hearing your own voice. No, stop. Wait, please. Hey, bop. Ah! Also, you're in love. The other day, my daughter, who is adorable and has these curls, it's like, wow, where did those come from? You know? And, but the other day, she took off her diaper. And said, oh, what's in here? This is brown. Let me see if I can paint the wall with it. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm just trying to survive out here. It's the jungle. You know what they say about parenting? The days are long. The years are short. I'm trying not to waste time and energy on things that don't matter. The wall's going to get clean. I think Lauren will clean it. <laughs> Listen to me. We expel so much energy on stuff that just don't matter. What am I going to wear? Where am I going to go? How am I going to pay for this? Do I look right? Am I going to be alone? All of these different things, and, 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 and yes, they matter, but they don't matter in comparison. Because if you gain the world, but lose your soul, if you eat everything here, but miss the meal, what good did it do you? Which brings me to the third part of verse five. Another went to his business. To his business. First person who won't make it to the dinner is the person who goes their own way. The second person is the person who prioritizes their own survival. The third person is the one who makes wealth too important, too important. Wealth is good. It helps solve problems. Did you know that if Christians, if every Christian tithed, if every Christian gave 10% of their income back through the local church and the churches were faithful to steward that money, the church would be able to solve all world hunger and most diseases alone. So, so money is not bad and wealth is not a problem. I wish you wealth in your life. I do. Uh, in fact, I, I'm trying, I'm working on setting my kids up with generational wealth. I have a side hustle that helps with that. Okay, Paul tells Timothy this. He says, it, it's not money that is the root of all evil. It's the love of money. L let's be clear about that. And, and, and the people who won't make it to this meal love money, like love it too much. And, and, and we know you love money too much when the kingdom is not your priority. Do you know the devil will give you really whatever you want? If you want, if you want to win in this earth, if, if you want to gain the world, 
the devil will help you do it. If you bow to him. I mean, it's so funny because he did this to Jesus in his weakest moment. And the enemy will come in at your weakest moment. When you're most broke, you're most tempted to go, all right, what do I got to do to get out of this? Remember, Jesus has been fasting for 40 days and he's near the end and the devil shows up and says, hey, Jesus, here's a kingdom. Isn't this what you came for? Bow to me. And thank God that we have Jesus as an example that we don't have to be overcome by temptation. And thank God that Jesus came 100% God, 100% man, having gone through the same things we will go through. Because uh, let me be clear, the enemy will show up and say, hey, isn't this what you came for? If you just bow to me, if you just sell your soul to me, then you can have it. Everything that God intends or creates, Satan counterfeits. In Matthew 19, verse 21, the people are asking what deed can be done to inherit eternal life, to get to the dinner. Jesus tells a rich young ruler this. He says in verse 21, Jesus told him, if you want to be perfect, go and sell all your possessions and give the money to the poor and you will, tre- you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. But when the young man heard this, he went away sad for he had many possessions. It's such a fascinating story because at the end of the day, we know it's not deeds that gets us to the dinner. It's faith. But Jesus gives this opportunity to this rich young ruler because he knows he can't follow me if I don't have his heart. And is Jesus asking for your money today? Am I? No, not necessarily. Uh, What Jesus is doing here with this wealthy young man is he's going, hey, I'm about to ask you to follow me, to deny yourself. I'm about to ask you to go through some trials and some tribulation. I'm about to ask you to walk with me to the cross. I'm about to ask you to go places you never thought you'd go. I'm about to show you miracles, signs, and wonders you've never seen. I'm about to show you something better than wealth. But if that's on you, if you love that more, you can't go where I'm going. And there's going to be a lot of people who aren't even rich, who love money too much to truly follow Jesus. And I'm telling you because it plays out in so many other areas. My pursuit is home. My pursuit is get out of Philly. My pursuit is go here. My pursuit is stuff and things and showing people off. And my my pursuit is, is making other people think that I'm something. I'm not all these different things. What does Jesus want? Jesus wants your heart. And when he has it, he will take you places you never asked, dream, think, or imagine. Places and things and experiences and money cannot buy that money can't buy you will sit at that meal when it's all said and done and you'll go you know I've had great steakhouses and great brunches and I've had great experiences I've been on yachts not me you I've done all these I've flown on private jet you know whatever I don't know I haven't done those things But you can do all those things, but you're going to sit at that meal with Christ and go, all of that was nothing compared to the power and the glory and the greatness of God. Last one, verse six. We did too much celebrating today. They give me enough time to preach. Verse six, others seized his messengers, insulted them, and killed them. Number four, who ain't making it? Those who reject the message. The the people who denied 
the messengers were so offended and offensive that they actually killed those delivering the invite. It would be as if I was up here preaching the good news, which I am. And you're like, I'm so offended by this, I'm going to kill the preacher. And you seized me and killed me. Newsflash, there will come a day where that will take place. So if you'd like to join our security team, it's got room. But the thing is, is it might not be blatant because many aren't an outward opponent of God, but if you reject him and his message of repentance, you're still nailing him to the cross with your sin. And in Acts 26, and I'm closing, I'm almost done. The apostle Paul is in chains. He's being accused for his belief in Christ. Don't read it yet. And he's granted an audience with King Agrippa. This is crazy. He's thrilled. He begins to describe his testimony of being a murderer, former Pharisee. He explains the gospel and the mysteries of the resurrection. It's powerful. And then King Agrippa, he responds to Paul right here. Acts 26, 27, 28. King Agrippa, here we go. King Agrippa, do you believe the writings of the prophets, their messages and words? I know that you do. Then Agrippa said to Paul, in a short time and with so little effort, you almost persuade me to be a Christian. King Agrippa missing the meal. He had everything. He had power, money, fame, soldiers, security. And sadly, this might be the situation of many where you're almost persuaded, where you sit in a gathering, where you sit in a service and you feel the Holy Spirit. You got the lump in your throat. Like, you know, the lifestyle you are living is not pleasing God. You know, there's gotta be more to life than pleasing yourself. Like, you know, and you're, you're like King Agrippa. You, in a sense, you've got power because you're doing the thing on your own but you're rejecting the message and the minister, the apostle, the pastor, the evangelist, whoever it is, stands before you and says, guess what? Jesus Christ, he died for your sin. Jesus Christ is God. He died on the cross. His blood covers your sin. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He was resurrected on the third day. The same power that conquered that grave is offered to you. If you follow him, you'll live an abundant life. Like the good news of the gospel that Paul was a murderer. He was the chief of sinners. Yet God chose to save him. He can save you. Don't be the almost person. Don't almost get to the dinner. And many of us, we leave services like this, encounters like this, divine moments like this, and go, man, that bald preacher almost persuaded me. Jesus. Had he just had hair. <laughs> you know what they say? God made a few people beautiful. The rest of you, he gave you hair. think about it. I'm closing. I'm closing. I want to tell you a story of Irwin. Irwin's a young adult who attends our Port Richmond location. I know Port Richmond's cheering for Irwin right now. He was invited by his neighbor and he describes his encounter with God as something he could never put into words. Erwin gave his life to Jesus his very first Sunday. He got baptized in water earlier this month. And now he serves in our kids' ministry with everything he has. Let me tell you something. Erwin, he's not missing this meal. And I want to remind everybody that the stories like Erwin happen every single week in our locations. For nine years, we've been reviving every block. For nine years, we've been bringing Jesus to every street corner, every neighborhood. For nine years, we've been extending radical faith. For nine years, we've been believing for revival. For nine years.
years we've been going after God, His presence, lost people. I'm here to tell you, we ain't stopping. We're just getting started. The good news is you can join us and not miss the meal.